Hi, uh, my name is Raul Bartolome. I, uh, the leader of uh, ushering, and some also a part of the ministry. Uh, I lead also uh, the. Uh, I think I. Oh. This isn't ongoing. This is just for us to for editing. Oh, so for, we know. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you can stand on that. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Again, let, let me repeat. Hi, uh, I'm Raul Bartolome and I lead the um, ushering uh, ministry. So I'm reading uh, um, a chapter, a second Samuel chapter 11. This is about uh, when David prayed, I have sinned. Uh, it reflected on me that the sin nature truly manifested even if we boast of our faith. David wrote it in Psalms 11, 5, 7, 15, 1, 3, 17, 1, 5. And 26 1 3 and 4 uh, this reminds me of how we need to be in constant awareness of his presence in every aspect of our lives we as believers always need to be right in the eyes of God we cannot let sin sit with, within our hearts and continue to worship the Lord we are in constant battle against the rulers and the authorities of spiritual forces of evil and Paul remind us to put on the armor of God. David show us during this time and age how he grieved the spirit. We as believers know exactly what is righteous in the eyes of God and how much we know the sin we commit. David's anguish due to the fact that what he did is to satisfy his lust. He was blinded by his own selfish and lustful desires. He never came to his sense of righteousness at that time. When we sin, we carry the guilt until we know when to repent and to seek the Lord's forgiveness. We as believers know exactly when we grieve the Holy Spirit. We are anxious and stressed. And when we pursue our own desires, we impose our own reason, we declare our own excuses, and we set aside God's holy presence. And the danger is giving the enemy a foothold of your own fleshly desires. There is no one to blame but ourselves. What David did to cover his sin with another sin by justifying his own actions through his power. We cannot hide our identity as Christians. When we represent God, the enemy will try to expose every sin we commit. And what we did not acknowledge and repent yet. We know God is all-knowing and before you ask or say and do, He know it already. So what's the point of hiding and holding on to your sin? So God's forgiveness is there for us. He forgives all our sin from yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the days to come. Don't believe the enemy's lies that you are not worthy to be forgiven. Yes, we are prone to sin. That's our nature. But we have to ask for forgiveness. And if we will entertain our fleshly desires and forget who we live for, we, cannot nev we can never win the battle and live a holy life. We are giving the enemy a foothold, and it will continue to feed us of what we want to hear and see. If we cover our life of sin just like David, we will suffer and drown. My lesson to be learned is to Acknowledge right away and open the repentant heart and believe that the Lord has forgiven us 70 times 7. The acknowledging part is truly to give praise, thanksgiving, pausing on God's holiness and righteousness. So when we ask for forgiveness, we focus on God's holiness. Second Samuel 12, God used Nathan to tell him about the rich and the poor and David show his anger. And this opened his heart, eyes, and mind because Nathan told him, this is he. Oh, this is where David really in anguish, he said, you know, I have, the sin I committed 
is before the Lord. This is where we see God's glory. We cannot glorify God if we have sinned. The presence of the Lord will be hidden by our sins. Don't let sin delay the blessings of the Lord through you for His will and purposes. Our ultimate position as Christian is tested by the character of our prayer life. Uh, one uh, famous uh, a preacher quoted that as a believer, we should be ready and willing to live a holy life or else we cannot call ourselves a Christian. That's our life challenge. So our life is truly a living testimony and witness to our Lord Jesus Christ what He did on the cross. In Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So let's live our life, be a reflection of God's righteousness and holiness. Just as what Paul reminds us in Ephesians 4.24 And to put on the new self created to be like God through righteousness and holiness. Thank you.